This is the complete updated guide to shooting videos with your iPhone. We'll cover everything step by step so that you'll learn exactly how to film with iPhone, with all the latest camera settings, tools, and iPhone video tips to get awesome results. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're seeing value in this video, make sure you're giving it a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference. And all the links to everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's jump into it. So we've created video guides like this before and the comments have always been awesome. But it's been a few years now and there's been some big updates on the iOS software side of things, but also in the iPhone cameras as well. So in this updated version, we'll cover off on the latest tips plus all the coolest gear that I recommend right now and all the key settings and steps that you need to get the most out of your iPhone camera. Now to be perfectly clear, you don't need any additional gear to get great results following along with the process that I'm about to show you. But I will mention some of the low cost tools that I'm using to get even better results as we go through. And just like last time, don't worry about taking notes. We've put together a quick start reference guide that you can download for free and follow along with next time you're filming. So make sure you're sticking around to the end for that link. Okay, so step number one is to prepare your content for filming. I know this one sounds pretty obvious when you hear it, but it's gonna be much easier for you to create an amazing video if you've done a little bit of preparation work up front instead of just trying to wing it or figure it all out while you're in front of the camera. So what I'm talking about here is doing a little bit of preparation work, either just jotting down a few bullet points that you wanna cover, or it could be a full-on word-for-word script that you're gonna read out for your content. Either way, this is gonna help you create your content faster and have the content be more succinct and engaging for your viewers. Step number two is to find a suitable location for filming. So the ideal location would be something that's not too distracting for your viewers with whatever's going on in the background and also being mindful of any background noise or noise in the area that you're filming. So you wanna be mindful of things like a lot of kids playing around outside or someone mowing the lawn or using a leaf blower or planes flying overhead. It can be really distracting for you creating the content but also distracting for your viewers watching your videos back afterwards. So you wanna try and find a place with as minimal background noise as possible. You also wanna try and find a place that matches the overall feel or vibe you're going for in your videos. So the background matches the content that you're producing. So it wouldn't really make sense to have a cooking video filmed in a gym. Likewise, with your content, you wanna make sure that it's congruent with what you're saying and where you're actually shooting it. Now, the most ideal location as well would ideally be something where you can just set everything up and leave it set up. If you're going to be filming in the living room of your home, then you could have people rocking up. You could have to set up and pack up every time you want to shoot a video, adding to that procrastination or the extra effort that's going to go into you just quickly shooting some content. So the ideal scenario and the ideal location would be somewhere where you can leave everything set up, just walk in, turn everything on, and you're good to go creating content. The next step then is to decide if you're going to be using the selfie camera, the front facing camera, or the primary camera, the main one on the back of your device. And there are pros and cons of each. So if you're someone who wants the highest quality video recording out of your iPhone, then you'll wanna be using that primary camera on the back of the device. But it's gonna make it pretty hard for you to shoot videos like this yourself because you won't be able to quickly glance across at the screen, check that you're in focus, that you're actually recording because the screen's gonna be facing the other way. But we have done a video on this channel and I'll link it up in the cards and below in the description with a few different options for you if you are going to be shooting videos solo and using the back primary cameras on your device. So the other option you've got then is to use the front facing camera, the selfie camera on your phone. Now, while it's not as good as the cameras on the back of your device, this is still going to be more than enough for you to create amazing looking videos and to do it much easier because you're able to see yourself quickly glancing across at your phone screen to make sure that everything is all good while you're recording. So what I'm shooting this video on right now is the front facing camera on an iPhone 12 Pro and this is what it looks like but you definitely need to make sure that you are making eye contact with the camera lens and not with the phone screen. So if I'm looking at the phone screen now, we see people do this all the time. They're looking at themselves. You need to be making eye contact with the viewers, which is where you're looking at the camera lens. So if you're using the selfie cam, eyes on the lens. The next one then is another obvious one when you hear it, but a lot of people don't do it. And that is to clean your camera lens. These are our phones, they're up against our faces. They could have fingerprints, dirt, makeup, whatever. 
on them, all covering that camera lens or smearing it, creating a lower quality, blurrier video at the end of the day. So you really wanna build that habit that before you take any photos or videos with your phone, that you are cleaning that camera lens. So ideally you would be using some sort of microfiber cloth or lens cleaning cloth that you might get with your glasses to make sure that you're not gonna scratch the lens. But whatever you've got access to, as long as it's a soft material, will probably be fine. The next step is to stabilize and position your phone for filming. So unless you're after that shaky Blair Witch style footage, then ideally here you're gonna be trying to get your phone out of your hands wherever possible. Just holding your phone out in your hands is one of the most unstable places that you can put it. Even using something like a selfie stick is going to give you a much better result at taking some of that shake out. But ideally, if you are going to be moving around, then that's when you could be looking at something like a gimbal stabilizer, like the Osmo Mobile, which will really take all the shake and movement out of it. But if you're not gonna be moving around and you're just gonna create a locked off shot like this one where there is no movement, then really you can use whatever it is you've got access to to get your phone to the right height so that the camera lens that you're going to be using is just below eye level. And I do mean ever so slightly below eye level. That'll stop any of the up the nose shots or you looking right up to the camera. So to get your phone to the right height, whether you're gonna be sitting or standing, this is where a tripod is gonna make your life so easy. And there's all different size ones, from ones that will work well on a desk to ones that will go right up to standing height. And we'll have links to our recommendations down in the description below. But one great all-rounder, and the one that I'm using here for this video, is just a $20 Archon tripod. It'll let you mount your phone in both portrait and in landscape so you're covered no matter what type of videos you wanna create. And you can see in the case of this video right here, I've just used a box to lift it up to get it to the right height. So you don't need to have access to the world's best gear. You could probably use something that you've already got lying around the house or couple it with some really cheap gear as well. Now for you, it could be that you're just placing your phone up on a bookcase or a TV cabinet or whatever it is that you've got access to, just make sure that your phone is at the right height and that it's out of your hands wherever possible. The next step is to set up your lighting. Now the most important thing with lighting is to light yourself or the subject of your video up first. And then if you've got access to any additional lights, then use those to light up the background. Now if you don't have any lights, then you can use the natural light coming through the window, which is what I'm doing here but really any sort of lights that you've got lying around can help improve your shot. So whether it's a desktop light, a bedside table light, you can bring it into your shot to maybe even up some of the shadows that you might have on your face or to use it to get creative and light up something in the background. Now a great portable cheap LED light that I use, I love and I recommend is the Yongyo YN300 Air. Crazy name good light and it's actually what I'm using here right now. So I'm currently sitting in front of a big window. I've got lots of natural light coming in through that and I'm using the Yongyo light just as a fill light to fill in some of those shadows. So if I go ahead and turn that light off now, then this is what it looks like. So it's not a massive difference, but I'm definitely a lot darker in the shot and I don't stand out from the background as much. And now that you've got your lighting sorted, the next step is to connect your microphone. Now, I would say that your audio is probably the most important piece of your video. If you've got distorted or scratchy audio, it's gonna be very distracting for your viewers. And it's gonna be very hard for them to be engaged with your content and to stick around watching it. Now, what I would strongly suggest is that you're using an external microphone, an additional microphone, not just relying on the one that is built into your iPhone. Now, if that's all you've got access to, then still create videos. But I would say that if you're gonna spend money on one thing, it should be your microphone. And you can get an amazing microphone just for $20 that is definitely going to level up the audio in your videos. The microphone that I'm using right now for this one is a $20 lavalier microphone called the Boya BYM1. And it's actually what we've used for a lot of the videos on our YouTube channel as well. This thing has a ridiculously long cable and it will work on cameras, smartphones, and even computers. And another option, if you're looking for something wireless, the Rode Wireless Go is probably our best bang for buck recommendation for a wireless microphone, and you can purchase an adapter so that it will work with your iPhone as well. Now, another great option, if you're gonna be moving around and you don't wanna be physically cabled in and connected to your phone, and you still wanna get great audio, would be to look at a little mini shotgun microphone. And Rode make a great one, the Rode Video Micro. So again, links are in the description box below, but getting great audio here is really key to having an amazing video. 
Now, if you're on one of those newer iPhones that doesn't have that headphone jack plug, then you will need to get a lightning to headphone jack connector adapter so that you can plug in the microphone. Next up, we're gonna prepare our phone for filming. So you wanna make sure that you've got enough storage on your device to hold the videos that you're about to create. So it could be that you're going through, you're doing a backup of all the photos and videos and stuff that are on there, whether it's to iCloud, whether you're copying them off to your computer, but you're removing them off your device to free up some storage so that you're not gonna run out halfway through creating a video. And another thing you don't want to run out of halfway through filming is your battery life. So you want to make sure that you are prepped and you have charged your phone fully before recording because sometimes these things take a lot longer than we think. And if you're going into it with only a small percentage of battery, you might run out and that can be pretty frustrating. You'll also wanna lock in the recording quality for your videos as well. So you'll need to choose if you're gonna be shooting at 1080p or 4K. Now this will be dependent on which device and which camera you're using as to what options you'll have access to. Now as a general rule, I'd say wherever possible to try and shoot your videos at the highest quality possible for your device. So if you've got the ability to shoot in 4K, then shoot in 4K. If that's 1080, then set it to 1080. If you've only got access to shoot videos at 720p on your device, still create videos. It's not going to be detrimental to the growth of your YouTube channel or the performance of your videos, but wherever possible, I would say you should be aiming for 1080p at a minimum. And the main reason I say shoot your videos in the highest quality possible is that you can always compress or you can always lower the quality of the video afterwards, but you can never go back. So start with the highest quality. Now there's one more setting that I wanna bring your attention to and that's HEVC recording. And you get to turn this on or off. So it's high efficiency or high compression for your videos that you're capturing. So it does mean that you'll be able to capture still great looking videos, but there'll be smaller file sizes because they are compressed. But the downside of doing this is depending on which video editing software you're using, that they might not be able to play these back or edit these back right now, or some of your computers might not be powerful enough to decode and to edit these files efficiently. So for me personally, I always turn this off so that way I know that my footage can be easily edited on pretty much any device or any computer. Now I'd also strongly advise that you are putting your phone into airplane mode or do not disturb mode so that you're able to block or stop any notifications or phone calls or anything coming through while you're recording. Absolute best case it's going to annoy you a little bit or distract you a little bit, maybe break your train of thought while you're creating your content. But worst case, it could actually stop the video recording or it could even remove everything that you had recorded up to that point. So it's good practice just to try and stop any notifications or any distractions coming in while you're filming. Next up, you wanna lock down your camera settings so that nothing is changing while you're recording your videos. So here you wanna open up the camera app, you wanna switch over to video mode, you wanna select the camera lens that you're going to be using, make any adjustments to the framing of your shot, and then you just wanna tap and hold on the area that you wanna set the exposure and the focus for. And if you keep holding that down, a little box will pop up saying AEAF lock, auto exposure and auto focus lock. And this means that your brightness and your focus is locked at that point. So ideally you're doing it with yourself or whoever is gonna be on camera, that's what you're tapping on to set that focus and exposure. Now, if you're trying to do this yourself, then I suggest bringing in some sort of a placeholder, a pillow or a backpack or something that you can put in the position that you're gonna be sitting or standing in and you set the focus and exposure to that then you just move it out of the way when you're good to go. Now, after you've locked that focus and exposure, if you wanna make any brightness adjustments to make it brighter or darker, then you can just tap on the screen and swipe up or down slowly, and it will make those minor adjustments to make your shot brighter or darker. Once you let go, that is where your shot will be locked. And the reason you wanna do this is so that your phone isn't automatically adjusting, going brighter or darker, or even shifting focus to other things in your shot while you're recording. So this gives you full control, knowing that how you set it, it will stay for the entire length of your video. Now there are some amazing apps that take this much further and allow you to really lock everything down and give you DSLR-like settings in your iPhone. Our top recommended aftermarket or third-party camera app to do that is Filmic Pro. This is an amazing app that works on iOS and Android and we have dedicated tutorials on that again that I will link down below. 
Now we're almost at the point where we're ready to create our content, but there's one more step that is super important that can save you a ton of headaches and wasted time. And that is to create a short test video. So what I'm talking about here is getting everything set up, ready to go as if it's the real deal, where you get into position, you've got your lighting, you've got everything sorted, you press record and you record for five, 10, 20 seconds, and you present as if you're actually going to be presenting as well. And then you stop recording and you play it back so that you can check that every Everything is the way that you want it, that it looks good, that it sounds good, that everything is working properly before you actually get into your real content. This is gonna save you so much time because if there was any issues or anything that wasn't working properly, you're able to catch that in that 20 seconds instead of finding out later when you go to playback or you go to edit your video. Now the biggest thing to watch here, and this is speaking from experience, is that obviously to play back the video and to hear that it sounds good, you'll have to unplug your microphone. So you've got to make sure that afterwards when you've done your test, that you're plugging your microphone back in. It's a simple one to forget. Even after your test goes well, if you don't plug your microphone back in, you could create a terrible sounding video. So you want to make sure that you are plugging that back in. Do a quick sanity check again to make sure that everything is all good. And then the next step, is where we actually record our video content. So this is where we're pressing that big record button and we are presenting to camera. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind while you are recording. The first one I've already mentioned that is to keep your eyes on the camera lens. Whether it's the front facing camera or the back camera, you wanna make sure that you are keeping eye contact with the viewers and not looking at yourself. You also wanna be mindful of anything that's going on around you that could be distracting for your viewers. So it could be something that's going on in the background, people walking past, it could be that there's a big truck that's parked outside or airplanes going over and the noise is filtering through into your video. So you wanna be aware of those things and it could be that you just pause your video recording until that distraction goes away or you move to another location where that's not going to be an issue. But all that's left then is just for you to focus on creating your amazing video. Now, earlier in the video, I said I would be sharing with you your free downloadable checklist of everything that we covered off in this video for you to download and print out and use next time you're creating your video so that you don't miss any of these steps. There is a link to that guide on screen now and below in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.